A man finds a woman living alone in a hole in the desert, whose fate is toyed by teens watching her from above. According to them, he has a purpose down there too. A car drives to the end of a road leading to the drylands and Stone Wyndham exits, hiking up a rock formation to wait for an eclipse. Finally, the eclipse begins and he takes photos of it. After the event passes, he hikes back only to find a kid, Orion, sitting by the shade. He offers to help the kid who mentions that he lost his parents. As he helps him up, he notices Orion's blood-stained hand. To add to his confusion, the boy suddenly heads to a direction away from his car and doesn't stop. With no choice, he follows the kid whilst asking him where he lost his parents. Instead of answering, Orion asks for water and continues forward despite his insistence to go back. Stone blocks him but he pushes back, then smiles at him before disappearing down a hill. Exasperated, Stone gives up and leaves. He gets lost as the sun sets and finds no cell service in the area. Suddenly, he hears a voice calling and he tries to chase it. Night comes and Stone huddles on a nook, shivering at the cold desert air. Soon, he hears clinking bottles and a faint singing. He follows the sound over the edge of a cliff and finds a house at the bottom. There, a woman named Alina is singing while making her way inside. He carefully climbs down the thin ladder situated at the edge and makes his way to the house, hoping to get some help. He knocks, but nobody answers. Impatient and thirsty, he decides to let himself in. Inside, he sees Alina and apologizes for intruding, then asks for directions. The woman instead welcomes him in and offers food. She prepares a bowl for him while he mentions his experience with Orion. The woman eats, but Stone doesn't find the food appetizing, so Alina takes it and gives him water instead. She then offers him to stay over. He gratefully drinks the water and asks if she has a phone, but she doesn't answer. Later that night, Stone turns on his bed only to see Alina cleaning herself. In the morning, he quietly leaves while she's asleep. He relieves himself outside and stares at a painted image of a woman bursting out of a serpent on the rock wall. He looks around, seeing that the home is surrounded by tall rocks. Only then does he notice that the bottom half of the ladder leading up the cliff is missing. With no way back and Alina still asleep, Stone passes the time by taking photos of the bizarre surroundings. He soon notices Alina's awake and propping up part of the roof. He asks where the ladder is, but she focuses on lifting the roofing. He decides to help, and only then does Alina say that the ladder appears randomly and there's no other way out. Undeterred, he climbs the rocks but can't find any decent footing. Later, as Stone washes his worn hands, Alina comes by and offers to wash his clothes. He declines at first, but agrees seeing that the sun is setting. That night, Stone wakes to the sound of an engine running. He quickly heads out to check it, but finds no one outside. Instead, he hears voices that soon fade. In the morning, Stone rummages through the house for anything to help him escape. Eventually, he finds a pick and uses it to scale the rock wall. When he's halfway up, he hears screeching from above. A severed pig head suddenly rolls down near him, causing him to fall. Stone wakes from his fall that evening and sees the pick stabbed to his leg. Hearing his screams of pain, Alina soon arrives and helps him out. As she does, he mutters that he heard voices up there, then screams as Alina pulls the pick. Days pass as Stone recovers from the wound and the fall. In one night, Alina smears blood from her monthly visit on a wall filled with smears. One morning, Stone awakens and shambles out of the house. With no ladder still in sight, he shambles back and pulls Alina out, demanding to help him get out. He accuses her of imprisoning him, telling her that some people depend on him out there. As he yells, Alina only mutters that she can take care of him. He demands her to stay away from him, so she goes inside. He sits down and checks on his wound, but a voice suddenly yells from above, calling him. He shouts back, asking the person above to call the police to help him climb out. The teen, Corvus, tells him he has a winch to help him up. Stone thanks him, but the kid also asks what his favorite color is. Confused, he says it's red, and Corvus tells his sister Crux the color before yelling that they'll come back. Stone sits down in the shade and waits for the siblings to return. He pulls out his wallet to look at its contents, reminding himself who he is out there. Soon, Corvus drops a rope, asking Stone to tie himself up for hoisting, but mutters to himself that the man should have said blue. The rope pulls Stone up, but midway, the rope stops. He yells for them to pull again and again, but nobody responds. After some time, Stone nearly faints out of exhaustion, but someone suddenly relieves themselves on him. He looks up and finds several teens playing around and making the rope swing. Stone helplessly sways and yells for Alina as the teens above them start chanting. The woman finally comes out and yells for them to stop, but Stone hits his head on the wall and gets knocked out. That night, Stone wakes up in the house with a headache. Alina asks what he'll do now and without answering, the man shambles out of the door. He falls to the ground and prays out of desperation. 
pitying him, the woman approaches and finally reveals that the teens are strays gathered by the desert. She offers him to go back and rest, adding that he belongs to them now. She advises him to keep a low profile and not provoke them. As Alina leaves, Stone lays on his back and groans in pain. Above him, the teens gather and glare while Alina quietly eats her dinner in the house. One morning after some time had passed, Alina carefully cups a caged bird, cooing that it's fully healed. She passes by Stone on her way out and releases the bird outside with a smile. Inside, Stone tries to trim his beard and tells Alina to close the door. In the evening during dinner, Alina comments that his clothes are ruined, so she fetches some clothes for him. She then asks him to stand so she can check the clothes fit. This allows her to admire his physique, but he rejects her advances. The next day, Stone plants some seeds on the ground. Just then, he notices some supplies being roped down by one of the teens and Alina approaches to help him. They open the bag inside the house and find food and drinks. Stone mutters that the teens treat them like pets and wonders if Alina even cares anymore. The woman doesn't answer. During dinner, Stone tries to talk to Alina while ominous chanting could be heard in the distance. The man reaches for the bottle of liquor but Alina stops him, saying he had enough. He listens to the chanting and wonders what they want when suddenly, he hears a scream. He gets up to investigate, but the woman asks him not to leave her. Stone ignores her and heads outside. He grabs the pick and yells for the teens. One appears before him, but others race past him, distracting Stone. They run around him and one of them tackles him to the ground, but he manages to push him off. They all run away, so Stone storms back into the house. He confronts Alina, demanding why she let herself be toyed around and held hostage by children. Overcome by disbelief, he shuts the door and cries. Alina just tells him that he had too much to drink and should rest. Stone Stone scoffs at her advice and tells her he's a man that can handle himself. Alina repeats that he is indeed a man and begins to clean herself on the bed. She then turns to him knowingly. The man, starved of both human interaction and sanity, embraces Alina and cries. This soon turns into intimacy as the chanting from the teens echo into the night. The next morning, Stone wakes up and shambles out of the house. He leans on a pillar and tries to absorb everything that happened to him. Some time later, while Stone's checking on his crops, one of the teens, Lepus, suddenly asks what he's doing. He explains that he's farming and talks to him about how fertile desert soils are and how this place is a microbiome. The teen asks if he could teach him these things in exchange for soft drinks and he agrees. Lepus finds him interesting and tosses him a pack of gum. Stone resumes his farming and as he digs the soil, he finds a gold ring and some keys. That night, Stone comments on the photo of an old woman on the wall. She tells him it's the first mother. He asks what she remembers about the first mother, but Alina simply explains that the first mother loves her just as she loves the child inside her. Stone turns at the mention, but Alina reassures him that she's not asking him to be the child's father. Still, the man suspects that she plotted this. He berates her, saying he won't let a child be born out of a pathetic woman like her. The next morning, Stone entertains himself with playing cards but suddenly notices crows attacking his crops. He rushes out to repel them, but finds that his crops are already ruined. Not losing hope, Alina and Stone work together to salvage them. During the evening, while Stone's asleep, Alina walks out and sings. Stone stirs awake upon hearing her, but chooses not to investigate. The next day, while Stone jogs around with his fully healed leg, he hears Lepus whistle. The teen apologizes for not getting any soft drink, but asks to be taught anyway. Stone uses this opportunity to converse with the teen, telling him that they need help because Alina is pregnant. Lepus asks what they need, and the man tells him to get the rope and some digging tools, then they'll make a counterweight so they can climb up. Stone promises to take him with them if they get out, and they can be a family. Considering this, Lepus tells them to be ready because the rest have to be sleeping if they do this. Their conversations then interrupted when another teen, Arvo, nears Lepus and takes him away. Later, Alina comes out with a bucket of water and cleans Stone's wound. He thinks it's healed up, but it suddenly starts bleeding and an eye peeks out. He stirs awake from the nightmare and gets up. Alina asks him about what he talked about with Lepus, but he makes up his answer, saying they talked about the sun. During dinner, Alina entertains him with a conversation, asking what he misses from above. He answers freedom, or just the thought of freedom, of traveling and caring about someone. He digresses and says he wants a cheeseburger. Alina admits that she doesn't know what a cheeseburger is, so Stone explains 
mentions what it is. She then asks what he could miss from here, and he thoughtfully mentions that he'll miss the silence they shared. He asks how she managed to accept this place, so she shares how her mother viewed things, that everything here is real and outside is a mirage. In truth, however, Alina doesn't fully accept it. With that in mind, he decides to show her his camera. He shows the photos of the eclipse, and she says she saw it too. He cycles through the photos, and a video comes up, an accidental recording inside his car with music playing. Alina takes sudden interest in the music, asking him to play the clip again and again. As they sleep, the teens chant again in foreign language, growing angrier and angrier. The next morning, Alina heads out and suddenly screams. Stone rushes out to find the lifeless Lepus suspended above them with the teens glaring down at the two. Alina slams the ground in anguish, yelling in an unknown language. She then begs them to put him down, as it's what brothers do. Stone tries to console her, but she spits at him, saying he led her boy to death. He realizes that Lepus was her son, but the woman grabs a plank of wood and hits him with it. She belittles him, saying men can't live without women before knocking him out. After some time, Alina heads to a cage and in there, Stone jolts awake and tries to attack her. However, she just places a bowl of food inside and he gobbles it up manically. He grows restless at night and plays with a ring he found, clanging it as the teens pass by above. After another restless night, he plays with dirt when he suddenly finds a woman peering down at the hole. He frantically calls her with a hushed voice, asking her to call for help. The woman seems to understand and tells him she'll come back. He reassures himself repeatedly that he'll finally be rescued and laughs maniacally. In the afternoon, he watches Alina carry sticks and grass on the ground. Suddenly, he hears a woman scream and sees Arvo dragging her from before. He watches in vain as the teen strangles the woman until she stops breathing. Stone roars and goes berserk inside the cage like a maddened animal. That night, all the teens gather and head down to the hole. The younger one approaches the maddened man and offers him a piece of bread. He takes it and devours it as the kid runs off. Not far, Alina smears blood on her eyes and addresses all the teens as her sons and brothers. Everyone then starts dancing around a large bonfire. In the cage, Stone coughs and struggles as he watches the bizarre ritual. Alina closes her eyes as they cover her head with a white veil and pour blood on it. The Days went by and Stone's sanity withers. One day, Alina comes by to give him a blanket, but he suddenly grabs her arm and mutters that he wants to father all her children. He'll educate them and she'll care for them. She rejects it and tells him that he has no choice anymore. The crazed man points at her menacingly and states that their child will always be half of him, to remind her of what she had done to him. However, she explains that it doesn't matter because she always sees them as her children. He then asks why they keep him, and she answers that he'll stay until the child is born, and that in the desert, nothing is wasted. He mutters again and again to either free him or kill him. The months pass, and soon, Alina goes into labor. She goes to Stone and unlocks his cage, begging for help. He demands her to back away repeatedly, but seeing her struggle convinces him to help her. The two of them stumble as Stone's legs struggle to keep him upright due to atrophy. However, the man suddenly spots the bottom half of the ladder, and instead of helping Alina, he rushes to escape. The woman's wails echo across the land as she gives birth. Above them, the sun eclipses and Stone hears the cry of his newborn. Suddenly having second thoughts, he heads to the infant and takes it from the mother. While the father adores his daughter, Alina begs for her back, so he complies. The woman then tells him that she'll care for their daughter until she becomes the new mother. By then, Alina would have served her purpose. She also assures Stone that he just served served his own purpose. Arvo suddenly approaches from behind and ends Stone with a knife, saying that it's done. One morning, Alina organizes Stone's belongings and stashes them in a chest. She then takes her child and comforts her as she cries. Outside, Stone's body lays abandoned to the elements, fertilizing the ground. His purpose as a seed has been fulfilled, and his body now nourishes the land to provide for the new life. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.